Hello, good morning, good evening, and good night. Noon here on the East Coast. Uh, Going to be talking about our public sector team today. Also introducing you to some of our very own Verizon uh, volunteer first responders who are out there uh, giving you their all when they're not on the clock. Uh, as well as a chance to win and a thank you to some of our teammates. Uh, before we uh, bring in uh, former uh, NYPD Commissioner uh, Bill Bratton, who uh, helps us out uh, to talk about the, uh, the Verizon uh, First Responder Advisory Council, uh, I do want to share that video with you of what our teammates are doing to help the communities where they live and work. Take a look and you will be impressed. My name is Jim McConnell. I've been with Verizon for uh, going on 25 years. And about two years ago, I got involved in our local first responder community through search and rescue. Obviously being involved in the first responder community, I started asking around, what are we doing for first responders and particularly the volunteer community? And it started adding up to say, there's more of me in Verizon. And so uh, started some old fashioned digging, just trying to find people that are active first responders that are Verizon employees. We have made contact with firefighters, EMTs, paramedics, nurses, police officers. They come from all parts of our business and uh, ultimately we got to uh, start to hear their stories. My name is Jody. My name is Matt. Sandy. Michelle. Chad. Dan. John. My name is Kendrick and I'm a certified emergency medical technician. A volunteer fire captain. Public health medical responder. Advanced EMT and level two firefighter. I'm a registered nurse in neonatal intensive care. Volunteer auxiliary police officer. Volunteer EMT. An advanced emergency medical technician. Volunteer a firefighter, an emergency medical technician. And I'm a senior firefighter, emergency medical technician. When Jim first reached out uh, via email um, and, and sort of outlined his initiative, I thought, this is amazing. The advantage of this network is you've got a level of highly trained first responders throughout the entire company. Uh, and under circumstances, as we are right now, we can bring to the table expertise that hasn't been utilized before. As a network, it just makes us stronger. I don't look at myself as a hero. It's just a, a passion that I have. It's, it's something that I do. Basically what I love about EMS in particular is the ability to help others. When you look at their face and they go from being absolutely upset and scared to smiling. I just love helping people every day. Uh, no matter what the call was, it's an emergency to the person that you're helping. I, I know it sounds kind of cliche, but I think it's almost like a calling. All those hours that I put in on a volunteer basis to protect and serve my community, they were all just made worth it if I saved one life. For those of us who actually do work the front lines and do provide care to people, this is a calling. If you just help one person a day, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing here on Earth. Having the training and the ability and the calling to do this work is, I think, why I'm on this planet is to help people have a better life. I think the coolest part of, of having this group has been finding out that they're all over uh, America, they're all over the world. We have these, uh, as I've called it, uh, heroes among us. They're amazing people, and uh, we're gonna hopefully give them a voice. Uh, wow, some real true heroes among us. Uh, so proud to share that with everyone, to see the team uh, in action and the various different ways that they help. And, you know, first responders are a group that we have helped uh, stay connected time and time again uh, through our public sector team. We'll, we'll talk more about that here in a minute. Now, since the very early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, our public sector team has been partnering with different organizations, agencies, state, federal, local, uh, especially in schools. You, you know, the work we've done with the LA Unified School District and then state States like Georgia, Oklahoma, and South Carolina with more to come to keep these students connected as they're, they're going back to school. But we're just getting started. Uh, at the tail end of July, the public sector team announced uh, the Verizon First Responder Advisory Council. It's a group made up of some of the nation's top public safety leaders. Uh, it's a great uh, addition to what we can offer our customers uh, who in public safety who need the help. You know, resources available through a series of town halls and other planned events to counsel and share expertise. I'm joined today by Commissioner Bill Bratton. He is the uh, former NYPD commissioner and chief of the uh, LA Police Department, who is also chair of the council. Uh, commissioner, it's good to be with you again today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's get started. Uh, why is this council so important? It's going to be great to be with you and your colleagues. Uh, the council is incredibly important. It's made up of uh, highly respected, accomplished public safety leaders who represent all facets 
of the public safety community, including emergency management, fire, public health, and law enforcement. Uh, Verizon has always relied on the expertise and guidance of members of the public safety community that they serve, including myself over many years, and certainly Verizon's corporate security team headed up by Mike Mason, former executive assistant director of the FBI, who I've had the privilege of knowing and work with over many years. And it's there to ensure in the, it is meeting the needs and uh, requirements of those communities. The establishment of Verizon's first responder advisory council last year formalizes these efforts, and we are now going public. Good. And uh, I mentioned Mike Mason, a, a good friend of uh, Up to Speed Live, and always uh, good to hear from uh, from Mike. Uh, why make this council available to uh, our public safety customers? How does this help, and how does this benefit? Well, Verizon wants to ensure that the public safety community has the information, technology, and resources they need to protect and serve uh, the vital role that they, uh, the roles that they perform. And by making the advisory council available, it's an additional way, a critical way, of facilitating uh, that uh, need and that effort. We are here to be a conduit. We'll be reaching out. We network with all of those communities. And they're going to know that they can reach out to us as a way of getting directly into wherever they need to go in Verizon to get the answers and the responses they need. Yeah, that's so important to do that. And I know you all have your first uh, event coming up uh, next week. Tell me more about that and uh, and what people can expect, please. Yes, we're very excited about that. We're planning to do periodic town hall meetings uh, like this, where uh, basically uh, Verizon uh, customers, a lot of our colleagues and friends, can dial in. And this town hall is going to cover the wide spectrum of issues that is facing public safety at this particular time and address the critical importance of communications, the ability to collaborate intimately at all times, and the prioritization that Verizon is giving to public safety needs to ensure that that communication is always there for them. So it's intended to be an informative uh, uh, opportunity to share, but also to hear. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. I'm very excited. We've got a top tier team of uh, members of the council will be on that call. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to get some information about how people might be able to dial in. That is great. Yes, that, that event next uh, Tuesday from 4 to uh, 530. Uh, if you're interested in registering for that or know some folks in the uh, the public sector or public uh, safety agencies, they can always go to uh, verizon.com slash public safety uh, to learn more about the Verizon First Responder Advisory Council. Commissioner Bratton, thank you so much for joining, and I wish you and the, uh, the group the best of luck as we uh, we help these folks out. Look forward to next Tuesday, August 18th. All the best. Good. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, next slide, if you will, please, Kyle. Another conversation that we are continuing. Uh, the commissioner mentioned uh, Mike Mason, who is our chief security officer. Well, he'll be uh, joined uh, on a live discussion later today with Eric Adams, who is the Brooklyn Borough President uh, there in New York City, and Michael Mata, Dallas Police Association President. Uh, to hear unique pre uh, perspectives on policing, protesting, and social justice. Uh, you know, they have some interesting backgrounds. Uh, Adams is the first African-American to hold his position, and his understanding of violence and racism comes from living an experience of uh, being a victim, uh, but choosing himself to become a police officer. Uh, Dallas P Police Sergeant Mata uh, has been on the force for 20 plus years and effectively the voice of Dallas police officers. Uh, this will offer insights into policing into our country and communities. Like I said, Mike Mason, our chief security officer, will be there. Retired veteran and a former FBI agent uh, will be joined by Ron John Lee uh, for this important conversation. All the details are on VZ Web and the street. Now, uh, as we uh, continue on with this episode today, uh, something fun we did last week. We're going to do it again this week. Kyle, next slide, uh, if you will, please. Are you up to speed? Hopefully you caught yesterday's uh, next edition of Andy's Staycation, where he took a trip to Kansas City, Missouri, saw some awfully good barbecue uh, that I'm missing right now. Uh, how are we paying it forward uh, in Kansas City, Missouri? Drop your questions over the next few days to us at live at Verizon.com for a chance to win uh, uh, some, some of the swag from our swag store. Uh, an important note to look out for there, maybe something with the Verizon Visa card. So uh, take, uh, pay attention to that. Look forward to all of your answers. Uh, and finally today, I want to share some thanks with uh, some of our network team in the Dobbs Ferry, New York area. We can go into the next slide there. Uh, this was emailed over to me. Uh, you see some of the damage that was left in the wake of Isaiah's, uh, Isaiah's 
uh, last uh, last week. A lot of polls down as a lot of folks in the Northeast experience. But uh, I want to call out some folks here who quickly got that area reconnected and actually got us some new business. Uh, Anthony Yellen, Pete Laughlin, Steve Steele, Mike McNally, uh, Key Kuhari, uh, Roman Hart, Lewis Harold, uh, Perrins, Dennis Shubin, and April Horton. All a shout out for the work uh, they did to uh, get this area reconnected. And like I said, uh, there was an apartment complex there that lost service with a competitor. Well, now they have switched their service over to Verizon because they saw how quickly we respond and get people back connected. Uh, so way to go to that team out there. I know a lot of our team uh, has been out busy this week with the various events going on uh, with, with weather. So thank you for everything that you are doing. But hey, that will do it for us today. Uh, we'll be back with you again tomorrow. Until next time, you're up to speed.